What's up everyone, my name is Ryan from R. Brandon, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you some basic retouching skills using a select few tools. Alright, so one of the first things we're going to do is duplicate our image so we can work non-destructively. Double click on the layer if it's locked and then drag it down to the new layer icon to give us a second copy. Hide one of the layers so we can come back to it if we need to. Then we're going to open a hue saturation layer adjustment by going into the adjustments panel. We need to select our red channel as we're going to be taking away the blemishes in our subject's cheek and forehead. We're going to increase the hue and saturation so we can see what parts of our subject is being affected. We then need to move the bottom slider so it only affects the red spots and blemishes. Once you're happy with your selection, we want to desaturate our reds and change the hue slightly so that there are no more blemishes. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is inverse our layer mask by pressing Command or Control and I, and then paint white with the brush tool on top of the spots and blemishes to only affect those areas. Alright, so now we need to create a new layer and grab our spot healing brush. Reduce the size of the brush so it's about 20% larger than the spots, and click where you want to be smoothed out. To bring back some of the cheek tones, we need to make a new layer. Grab our brush tool and pick a pink tone from the lips using the eyedropper tool. Then we're going to create some pink tones on the cheeks and forehead, change the blending mode to soft light and drop the opacity depending on your image. We then want to paint white on our hue saturation layer mask over the cheeks so that they aren't too saturated. The next thing we're going to do is grab our spot healing brush tool again and smooth out anything else that may have been missed. The next tool that I'm using is the clone stamp tool. I'm selecting part of the face that hasn't been changed and replacing the skin texture of the places that used to have the spots. Now we're going to be bringing a little more definition to our subject's face. To do this, we're going to be using the Blend If tool. You first want to start off by creating a new layer and painting black over the shadows on our subject's face. Open up the layer blending options and we want to focus on the bottom slider. We want to see where the underlying layer is darker to only be visible. So to do this, we move the white slider to the left, hold Alt to separate it to create a spectrum for our shadows to enhance. We then want to change the blender mode to overlay and lower the opacity slightly. Alright, so next we're going to use the same effect but this time we're going to be targeting the highlights. So we we'll need to create a new layer and paint white on our highlights. We're going to be concentrating on the same slider as before but this time we want to see where the underlying layer is lighter to only be visible. So this time we alter the black slider and shift it from left to right. And again, change the blender mode to overlay and lower the opacity. We're going to add another hue saturation layer. Increase the saturation and lightness so that our lips have more colour in them. The next thing we need to do is inverse the selection, so on our layer mask press command or control and I, and then we want to get our brush tool and paint white on the lips to only be visible. Still on the same hue saturation layer, we want to head into our red channel and increase the saturation. And now we're going to enhance the eyes. Grab your curves adjustment layer and you may need to play around with the histogram depending on your image. 
But basically what I've told us to do is increase the exposure of the whites and darken in the blacks giving us more contrast for the eyes. Inverse your layer mask by pressing command or control and L. Paint white over the eyes so that is the only place that I will enhance. Sample a colour using the eyedropper tool and paint away any reflections that our subject might have in their eyes. Now create a new layer, grab a small brush with a soft edge and paint back in the reflection. Now we're going to give those reflections a small Gaussian blur. Now we're going to be using the blend if tool again, but this time it's going to be to emphasise her body, arms and hands. So just the same as before, we want to grab our brush tool and paint black on our subject shadows. Alright, so focusing on the bottom slider, we want to see where the underlying layer is darker to only be visible. So drag the slider from left to right and click an Alt to separate the sliders giving us a spectrum of shadows to only affect. Just as before, change the blending mode to overlay and lower the opacity slightly so it isn't too strong. Repeat the same process, create a new layer, but this time paint white over our subject's highlights. Alright, so just as before we want to go into our blending options, we want to use the blend if tool that is right at the beginning. We want to use the bottom slider which is the underlying layer slider. We want to see where the underlying layer is lighter to only be visible. So to do this, we shift the black slider, which is on the left, over to the right, hold and alt to separate the two sliders to give us a spectrum of where the shadows and highlights merge. And again we want to change the blender mode to overlay and lower the opacity. Alright, so now we're going to use a high pass sharpening method. To do this, create a new layer at the top of our layers panel. Go to image, apply image, and this will merge all of your layers into one. Next, we want to go to filter, other, and high pass. Now, don't set a huge amount where you see every single detail, as this will give us a lot of haloing. But once you're happy, press OK and then change the blender mode to vivid light. This is going to sharpen our image really nicely and only bring out the details that we need. Now, because this is a very sharp method, I do recommend lowering the opacity once it's done. I would recommend between 20 and 30% depending on your image and the amount of high pass that you give it. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial guys, I really hope you enjoyed it, if you did give it a thumbs up and subscribe, like us on Facebook as r.brandon to keep up to date with everything that we do. My name is Ryan and I'll see you guys very soon.